Welcome to Sounding Board. This is a weekly program produced by Seroptimus International of Novato, whose mission is to help improve the lives of women and girls, both locally and internationally. Our program today is right here in Novato, right here in town, because we're going to look at our Novato museums. In fact, uh, I'm not really sure, is it museum or museums? <laughs> That's the first question I'm going to ask our guest tonight, uh, who is Susan Magnone, who is on the uh, board of the Novato Museum. Museums? Correct me, but, Susan. Okay. <laughs> no, you are absolutely correct. And I think uh, we're very fortunate in Novato to actually have, we actually have six uh, museums. Five of them are dedicated to history. I wonder how many people could actually tick them off right now. For all five or maybe six museums, wow. Okay, well, there's the Downtown uh, Novato History Museum. There's the Hamilton Field uh, History Museum. There is the Museum of the American Indian. There is the Olin Polly Museum. And our newest one is the Space Station Museum. Whoa, yeah, so that we sounds great. From, so from the past to the future. Great, great. Well, you know, I've often sat at that intersection right there on what, DeLong and Reichert, right by mm -hmm. Whole Foods, mm -hmm. waiting for the signal to change. And I look over at that red colored building over there, that old, beautiful old house. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I saw the sign that says museum. And I'm thinking, I've got to go there someday. So yeah. finally I did, Susan. So tell us a little bit of the history about that old house. Okay, well, the house, um, we refer to it as the Postmaster's House because it was built for the first postmaster in Novato in um, 1850. And it, uh, it changed hands, of course, many owners over the years. And then finally, in 1972, um, Fabian Bobo gave it, the owner at the time, gave it to the city of Novato if they would move it because it was down on South Nevada Boulevard. So the city moved it to its current position uh, where it is now because they wanted to create uh, an old town kind of feeling in that area. Well, it took a while. Um, civic organizations pitched in, contributed money and time, and they refurbished the building. And then in 1976, it became the Nevada History Museum. And it took a lot of community involvement and support to make that happen. And that same kind of support and partnership of working together also resulted in the Hamilton uh, History Museum in 2000, which was opened in 2007. 2000, 2007, did you say? Mm -hmm. That is a new one then. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Right. So you're on the Guild. Is it, tell us how, what is the Guild? Okay, well, the, the Nevada Historical Guild is a nonprofit organization. There's about 400 members. And uh, our purpose, is, if you can tell from the mission statement, is to preserve, collect, preserve uh, historical artifacts and then to provide access to them for the public to learn about, you know, to education about the history of Nevada and Northern, Calif Northern Marin County. Why is it important that a city has a museum? See, well, I think it's very important in the fact that um, when you think about it, we as individuals seem to have a need to know where did we come from. Knowing mm. where, where grandma and grandpa came from, what, where did they live, what did they do, helps us to understand who we are as people. And the same is true for a community. Knowing where what its history is gives us sort of a common heritage that uh, I think connects us as a community. And that's particularly important in California because I think other than the Native Americans, we're all immigrants. We've all come from somewhere else. So what do we have in common? And what we have in common is the history of Nevada. Interesting. And I think knowing where we've come from helps us to understand the present. Mm -hmm. Especially it's important for our children. Yes. 
Yeah, definitely. And you have to, a lot of children come to the museum? The third grades, uh, many of the third grade classes uh, come to the museum as part of their, you know, history, social science uh, curriculum. And, you know, it's so much more interesting to learn about your community when you can see Dr. Weissman's medical bag that he carried when he went on house calls mm. rather than just reading about it in the textbook. So it's a much better experience for the kids. Now, do you want to talk about the mission for a minute? Uh, do you want me to read it, or do you have it someplace? Um, would you like me to read that? Why don't you read it for you? Okay. okay. I think we're going to flash it up on the screen, too. But to the mission is to identify, collect, document, and preserve objects and information that signif significantly enhance the understanding of Novato and Northern Marin County history, and to encourage the education and involvement of the public through interpretive exhibits, programs, and publications. Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a lot, yeah. um, <laughs> and there's a lot involved in that. In, in, um, what I think is important to, to kind of realize, in doing our mission, we have an agreement with the city in which the city owns the museums. They own the buildings, and they own all of the artifacts that are in them. What the guild does is provide the staffing to operate those uh, those museums and we're all volunteers volunteers no, no one's paid and we take on the the complex task of running museums and it's mm. it's a lot of fun and it's interesting and it's always something uh, new happening and lots to learn there now you're on the board of the guild yes it? Now how many members are on the board uh, I think there's uh, 14, we can have up to 15 right now, I think there's 14 members. So how many volunteers do you have behind the scenes working on things? <laughs> That's a, it's kind of hard to keep track of them, because <laughs> uh, we're trying to, do, but uh, we did, we probably have, we figured just recently, Pat uh, Eklund and I were trying to figure it all out, we probably have like around 150 people wow. who do different kinds of things throughout the year. We come up with over a thousand hours of volunteer time wow. a year. So it's so if I were going to volunteer, I don't need another volunteer job, yeah. <laughs> if I were to volunteer for the, for the Museums Guild, what kind of work would I expect perhaps to do? Okay, well, um, Lots of yeah. different choices. You have lots of choices. Like I said, history just happens. So we don't have to make history happen. It happens. But preserving it and putting it in a format that people can then access it does take some work. And from there's many different levels to be in, involved. One is like just being a docent, uh, where, where when the museums are open, someone is there. And if someone comes in and has questions, we help point out the exhibits and kind of explain them to them. You know, and a lot of people do that one day a month. And it's and it's for four hours. It's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And they learn also. That's what I would think would be the most typical thing of volunteering. Exactly. Uh -huh. That is. But we have other things, um, I think they're a little bit more behind the scenes. Um, designing exhibits is we have a committee that does that. And then there's also this whole thing of, uh, we have what we call the archives, where we, we have thousands of articles uh, mm. and artifacts that need to be cataloged. They need to be entered into a database called Past Perfect. Uh, they have to be labeled. They have to be put in uh, non-acid containers. Mm. So there's all of that part that goes on. And that's, again, is something that people can be, you know, involved in. Mm. Right now, one of the biggest needs that we have is people to work on. And I just happen to have, we have like over 200 of these oral interviews of mm. people. And they're a wonderful resource but we need to put them on something besides one of these tapes to preserve mm. them and to make it easy for people to access. So that's a big project right now that we're looking for volunteers. To make them into a WAV file probably and have them uploaded so available to an internet site. Yes. So do you have an internet site? No. Oh, no! There's <laughs> a job. There's another need. We, need, we oh. desperately need yes. a website um, to be maintained, yeah. Good. Definitely need Good. that. And anything else a volunteer might be able to do? Well, there's, there are some, some what I consider maybe less exciting kinds of things, but are really important is just um, labeling. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if people have some computer skills, making making labels, putting them on files. Right now, um, I have a couple people working on, um, in the archives, we have files of newspaper articles and letters mm -hmm. from people from long ago that are in just manila folders, and they are crunched and not in very good shape. We're getting them into uh, acid-free hanging files. I mean, it's tedious, um, but they work on it for maybe an hour and a half and, uh, you know, one day a week, and that's about it. But it's getting done, mm -hmm. and I think it's an important thing that needs to be done to preserve it. Now, what about a newsletter? Do you have a way of communicating? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> the, the Guild has... Um, a newsletter called uh, the, the Historian, and you automatically get it when you join. And it tells both about the activities of the Guild, but the best part about it is we have people who like to write articles about the history of Nevada. Ooh, nice. And they're usually like two pages, and they're short, and they're fascinating. And what I liked about them is they're very honest and genuine, and they're not so much the sanitized version that we sometimes get in our textbooks. They're interesting. Good, good, yeah. Good. So we could use people who like to write. And you have no problems getting money for any of this. You know, our <laughs> right, we don't. The money really? that we have comes from dues, and we do very little other uh, fundraising because, again, we have no uh, paid very, staff. Yeah, that makes all the difference. Then, huh? Yeah. Do you have a storage facility someplace? For <laughs> Oh, yes. It's called Building 500, and it's located uh, on the Hamilton base. Oh, good. And it's, uh, it used to be, it was built to be uh, as a place to go in case an atomic... <laughs> it's an old bomb <laughs> site. It's a bomb site. <laughs> so it's well protected. Uh, and bomb shelter. That's bomb shelter, that that's, right. yes. Wasn't so it's well protected. And there are, there must be thousands of things in there. And I've only been down once and just got a little overwhelmed mm. by all the things that are there. Really? And I think one of the challenges that, that we have is how do we get those things to be seen by the public mm -hmm. rather than just in this bomb shelter? Mm. Um, one is we need a larger uh, museum. But two, we think you know, doing it using technology mm. is a way to that people can see these things uh, online somehow. So those are okay. some of our new ideas. So if I had something old and I wanted to donate it to the museum, what should I do? How can I do it? <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, yes, you can donate something, and I'm going to have you pick up. Um, thank you for picking this up to give as an example. It has to be, first of all, we don't want anything just because it's old. We are not the museum of old things. We, we are <laughs> old the, people. Oh, maybe. Old people. <laughs> Some of us old are there. We are the museum for Nevada. And so it has to have something, it has to have a historical connection with Nevada. And, and it, this clearly says Nevada, right? Yes, and this says it's a dairy products from Nevada. So right there we know it's something connected with Nevada. But it also has to tell, add to the story about Nevada's history. So this was recently brought in to us, and we don't know much about it except for what's written here. So one of our uh, members is going to become the history sleuth. And we have, we found a name, and we're going to call them, and we're going to see if we can find out the story about this box. Who owned it? Um, how long was it being used? We think it was used for milk bottles, but we're not sure. Um, and we want to get to know a little bit more about the story of it. So that, again, then we will put it into our collection. And when it is used, it will be used to tell the story probably about the family and about the dairy business in Nevada, which was a big... So you found a family name that's attached to this? Uh-huh. What is that? Anto? What does that say it is? Well, Anto or that Anto? one, it's A-N-T-O-G-N-I-N-I. -N -N -I. Oh, Anton, Antonini? Yeah, there's some letters missing on oh, that on side. On this side, okay. Yeah. Antonini. Dairy Production, Nevada. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So our job, you know, is, is solving mysteries and finding the stories. So can I say, if you want to bring us something, we need to know 
you know, what it is, who had it, uh, when. The year is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. What was it used for? You know, we need to have that kind of information before it is really of any use to us. So okay. keep looking. Okay. So tell us about some of the most exciting stories that you've had uh, come in your way, uh, some things that you've heard about. Yeah. Um, some of the... Some of the things that I think are uh, interesting are, first of all, we have lots of pictures, of old pictures, even from like the 1880s, 1890s. And we have several hundred of those. Several hundred? Hundreds, several oh, hundred kidding. of those mm. in a file. And it's fun to go through those and, and then compare them with what it is today. And um, one of the pictures that we have is of what, what what's called the fashion shop. Well, it's not clothes; it's a blacksmith. You know, some men. I was talking. I was talking to some men the other night. Some older men, uh -huh. and they immediately knew what a fashion shop was. Oh, really? I was stunned. I said, "Oh, I was going to throw that out." You know, yeah. I knew it was something I knew about. Yeah. Well, tell us what a fashion shop was <laughs> in those days. In those days, and this was in the 1890s to early 1900s, a fashion shop fashioned a tool for you and it was at, uh, a, blacksmith at a blacksmith shop so it was highly skilled people and it played an important role in the, in the community in a farming uh, community that Nevada was at that time so the we have this wonderful black and white picture of it and then we also have a picture of what it is today. And what is it today? <laughs> <laughs> it is Dr. Insomnia. Oh, how fun, on, right on downtown. Gran, yeah, on Grand Avenue. Isn't that and amazing? so it's fun to see how it's changed. And, and again, I think it's a good sign that Novato hasn't torn down its past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What other kinds of good, that old, then and, and now yeah, kinds of things? Concepts have you got? Um, we have uh, newspapers, and uh, from 1937, we have the Novato Advance, and, um, and you can take them out and read them. And what's interesting is... The actual newspapers. The actual newspapers. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is um, how it, what was of interest at that time, mm -hmm. and, and you can, you know, read through just a few and you get a sense of what the, the hot topics were in those mm -hmm. days. Um, and so that's interesting. The other thing I get out of it is, is what, how we write very differently now, how the media has changed. Um, and the topics that they write about and how they write about them is different. So if someone has a journalism interest that would be something that would be of interest to them, I think, to see how, how things have changed in that way. Great, great. So you talked once before about a diary. Yes. Um, and I, I was going to bring it, and then it's so fragile that I was, af I was afraid to. But pretend like I'm holding a very small little leather-bound li li uh, diary that was written in by someone during the Spanish-American War. Oh my gosh. And it's dated 1900. And with it is a letter that he wrote to his sister, and obviously the sister uh, donated it along mm. with this uh, little mm. diary. And, and the letter starts out, you know, your, your letter and newspapers arrived yesterday uh, to great joy. Um, it probably, is uh, probably six months old, but yes, exactly. It was. Yeah. It was six months old, <laughs> oh, God. and it said it was such a pleasure to read them in this godforsaken place, and they mm. were in the uh, in Panama. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, he said it was the first that they had received in uh, over two years. <gasps> so that yeah, oh, how awful. awful. Yeah. So it's it, again, you could kind of feel the. This, you know, I don't want to say the suffering, but how mm. difficult it was for them. Almost but impossible to imagine in our day of instant information patient. around the world. Exactly. Two years before you receive any information patient. from your family. Yeah. Oh. And just thrilled to get a two-year-old newspaper. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. 
So if uh, we had some Novato residents uh, around who might have some history, yes, what, what, what would you love to hear get from them? Um, <laughs> you know, again, one of the uh, the things, one of the focuses of our museum is about the ordinary people and their everyday lives. Um, and so often we think of history as uh, important people and they did heroic events. Well, the history, Novato History Museum, is just about ordinary people and, and the things that they did. So things that would be interesting to us would be what reflect what life was, daily life was like in Novato, let's say in 1970s, the 1980s. Um, before we go, huh? <laughs> yeah, before we go, <laughs> we still can have those things. Um, those kinds of things, and then things that tell a story, um, you know, about the people, about the individuals. And a lot of the stories um, that we find are about ordinary people just caring deeply about something and working hard to make it a come about. Mm -hmm. And I think the museum came about because people cared deeply about it and worked very hard to, to make it become a reality. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the kinds kinds of things. Look around, look I guess, look around your houses and see what do you think would be of interest and would have an interesting story. Especially like some photographs perhaps, you know. Exactly. <laughs> photographs are really <laughs> precious, but and I would say to people, please, please, write on the back of them or somewhere on them who it is or what it is when it is and where it is and where it is yeah and we all kind of go well i'll remember that that's that's mm -mm. grandma mm -mm. trust me you know mm -mm. the next generation isn't going to know that that was or the next second generation isn't going to know that that's great grandma and and even our generation i remember i had photographs that my mother had uh -huh. and my mother was getting older then and i'd say mom i said who's in this picture tell me who's in this picture i know it's yeah. So one of your special friends, and she'd look at it and look at it, and she'd, you know, I can't remember uh, anymore who yeah. that was. And yeah. I thought, oh, she's lost it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. even while they're still alive. So it's I know important it's to get that very information very important. Down. And I've had people say to me, well, n n n my kids aren't going to be interested <coughs> in these pictures. And, mm -hmm. and that may be true when they say it, but trust me, I've lived long enough to know that the next generation, the next generation, second generation, it is going to matter to them. Again, that need to know where did we come from? What mm -hmm. did great grandma look like? Is that where I got my red hair and freckles? Exactly. Yes. In fact, I have to tell you that I, I've been trying to be significant on Facebook with my family members who are all over the whole United, United States. States. In fact, all over the world. And finally, I made a connection by posting a, a picture of my mother and father on their wedding day and a few other th old pictures. And the younger people love those pictures. I get more comments on those yes. than anything else. And so if you want to connect with the rest of your family, I would say post pictures on Facebook of the family members. And That's it's it. history. for It'll be there forever, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> that's what you say. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the future of the museum or museums or whatever okay. you want to talk about. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, well, we've kind of touched uh, a little bit on them, but I'd like to point them out again. I, I really think the biggest challenge that we have right now is, is, is just using technology and the whole social media way of connecting and making this history, our common history, you know, accessible. To, to more people. And, and of course, I'm really, uh, we need some younger people. And by younger, I mean in their 50s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we would also like some in their 20s and their 30s. But we, we really, that is a challenge for many of us. And, and, and it's not just our museum, it's all the museums, uh, you know, in Marin County that struggle with this. Yeah. So uh, I think that's a challenge, and we're working on it. We're coming up with a technology plan for our museum to how can we move ahead and do that. And then the other one was something that you, you know, brought up was um, what do we currently have that is of value that we should be collecting? Because history is what happened yesterday, and it doesn't stop. 
And so we need to be collecting what happened yesterday so that uh, 50 years from now, people will mm -hmm. have s something to look at. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and I think it's important for us as residents to get out there and visit our museum. Yes. And I think it would be fun to have a contest, like a city contest with some kind of perks or rewards or, or something for those people who get around to all five, five or six, six or whatever it is, yes. museums. I mean, I've been to, I was, I, I was impressed one of your friends the other day that I'd actually been to three of them, you know? Yes. And it, yeah. it's hard to find somebody who's been to all five or even six. six. Yes. And yeah. I want to see that new space museum. And where is that located? Well, it's in uh, in Pacheco Plaza, um, near near where uh, the Paradise, Parad Market? Paradise Market is. And it's sort of on the side, and it's very small. And again, it started because uh, a man has this passion mm. about saving that history. Great. Yeah. Great. And then Olin Polly, I've been to the park many times, but I don't think I've been inside a museum there. Well, they have, it's, it, the park is the museum. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's called the Olin Polly Historic Park. Okay. And so the, the park is the museum. Good, I can check another one off. <laughs> yes, you can check that one off. Yes. Good, and I know I've been to a Miwok, and I've been to Hamilton. I love the Hamilton Museum Isn't with all that the airplanes fun? and all. Yes. Oh, this is great. Yeah. And then, of course, the downtown one. So all I have to do now is see the art museum, and I can say, I've been to the mall. Oh, huh? yes. Yeah. You should get a star for that. Yeah. 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 I wonder if you can say that, all those people <laughs> in the audience. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah. You know, and I think, honest, that's pretty impressive for a town the size of Nevada to have that many museums. Good. Yeah. Well, do you have anything, Susan, to say to <laughs> our, our audience as a, as a way of wrapping up today? Well, come on down, I guess I would say. <laughs> Come visit the museums. Come learn about the history of Novato. It's got an interesting history. And, and I think uh, come use that history to connect with the community. Good. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, viewing audience. And thank you, Leon Johnson, our um, magic magician in the back who puts it all together and makes us look good. And thank you, Sir Optimus International. Uh, of Novato, uh, club members who are the crew, and thank you, Buck Institute Research of Technology, uh, Research on Aging, for letting us use their fabulous television studio. And thank you, most of all, you, the viewing audience. Yeah.